I'm visiting Derek Underwood. Derek is the Assistant Commissioner of Agriculture for Consumer Protection. Derek, we think of agriculture, which is our largest industry, as growing crops in the field and vegetables and timber, but there's a lot that your agency is responsible for to make certain that it stays as viable as it can. What are some of the things that you look over and make certain are well done? That's right, Amanda. And you, you, you uh, uh, tuned into it when you said Consumer Protection Division. We protect the consumers of our state. Uh, we have a food safety and compliance department that goes out and they does inspections at food manufacturers and distribution centers. We have a consumer services division that goes out and checks weights and measuring devices such as your gas station or such as your grocery store scales. And that's why the commissioner's name is on the gas tank. That is exactly right. So I know I'm getting a gallon. You know you're getting a gallon Good. and get what you pay for. We also have a metrology laboratory that actually has the state standards for weights and volume. So our manufacturing industry, do they some, sometimes come to you to check their instrumentation against they the standard? They certainly do. Uh, we have companies such as Boeing Aircraft, uh, Bridgestone uh, Tire Companies, and a, a vast amount of others that come there to make sure that their weights and their measuring devices are calibrated to the state and national standards. That's pretty cool. And then our last uh, department yes. is, of course, the laboratory department, and that's where we are right now. And gosh, there is so much that goes on here. My head is spinning, but let's start with everybody's favorite, which is food. Food. Well, right, we have uh, we have five main um, laboratories within the laboratory uh, department. The first one is our food lab. What do we do in our food lab? Well, we go out and we get samples uh, of products such as uh, ground beef, mm -hmm. ground pork, ground chicken, and even a ground turkey. And we make sure that the product that you buy at the store has the the right labeling on it. So, for instance, if you bought a uh, 93.7 pack of hamburger meat, you're expecting to get how much? fat, how much lean? Yeah, I want to lose weight if I'm buying, right. so spending wanna, all that money. That's right, yeah. so you want to get something that has a, a, a lower fat content. Mm -hmm. Well, we check that to make sure that the fat content is accurate or within that tolerance. Uh, you want to make sure that an 80-20 pack of hamburger meat is not really 70% lean and 30% fat. We verify that. So the label claim that's made at the supermarket is what we test to make sure that the product is exactly what the supermarket or the distributor is claiming on their label. And it even goes with things that are packaged like ice cream because ice cream, I understand, has to have a certain amount of fat in it to not be ice milk. That's right, ice yeah. milk. A lot of times when you go to the restaurants and you pull out the little lever to get some of that, mostly that's ice milk. Uh -huh. uh, ice cream has to have at least 10% butter fat. The higher the butter fat, the better it tastes. Yeah. So uh, we check that as well and we do different um, anywhere from pet, from briars, or store brand. We bring them into the laboratory and we have an extraction, extraction technique to be able to check to make sure that the fat level is within that tolerance as well. Um, within our state, there is a large um, agricultural animal division and of course, feed is involved, and we hear things about how important it is that they have pure food and that they're not toxins and contaminants in it. Right. Do y'all control that as well? We do. When you when you hear about animal feed or pet food, uh, it's sometimes it, it has the same type of regulatory oversight as human food. Uh, so we have a uh, feed laboratory that brings in all sorts of animal feeds from you mentioned from gerbil feed to livestock to. to to poultry and to your, you know, to your pet companion pets, such as it, your even our dogs and cats, even your dogs mm -hmm. and cats, and we check for the guaranteed analysis of that product. Anytime you buy pet food or animal feed, you can look on the label and it says the protein, the fat, and the fiber. Those are what's required by law to have on every bag of animal feed. We check that to make sure that that protein, fat, and fiber is exactly what the label claims. I toured that lab earlier and was stunned at the precision and expertise that goes in there. I felt like y'all were manufacturing medicines for people <laughs> and, and so the quality that you hold these people to is remarkable. Right, we have certain standards and certain methods that we have to comply with. Uh, our feed lab and food lab staff have close to 50 years combined experience in those labs. They know what they're doing, they know what they're talking about. Uh, the techniques that we use are very precise, they're very um, time consuming. Luckily we get new I think we showed you a $200,000 piece of equipment that we just got set up to help us expand what we're currently doing now. But anything that could uh, affect your, your animal feed or your pet food, even other than the protein, fat, and fiber, maybe some types of toxins. You know, we hear about aflatoxin and, and products that are ground up to feed the animals, and there's a real uh, strict level that, that if it um, goes over that amount, it could actually be harmful or actually uh, fatal. To our animals, and you know, we've had some things that have happened in our state before, where you know animals and companion pets have died because of aflatoxin. So we check uh, corn uh, samples, wheat samples for different levels of toxins through our um, our methods and our analysis to ensure that 
the, the, the raw products that's being used in animal feeds are free from those toxins. And also, y'all have now added more equipment so that you can have, if there are questions that come up, we can help protect our manufacturers because you can show that you have two different results from two different machines, not just one machine's result that could be questioned right. in court. Legally, you have to have uh, different methods to prove the same outcome, and now we have different uh, multiple equipments that we can use to validate the other. Uh, we have farmers, for instance, that bring their product in that they're going to feed to their animals, and we check it for them as a service to make sure that their product is safe to give to their cattle because that in the long run keeps their animals safe but also keeps the consumers in our state safe but also it helps uh, adjust the price per pound or whatnot when it comes to uh, consuming animal meat or whatnot because one thing that we look at as consumers is making sure that we have an economical food source. That's true and the other thing I said besides the 50 years of experience y'all are now pursuing a certification that could be quite important. Right. Um, Every laboratory um, in, in the country, I'll put ours up against them any day, but in order for us to have that uh, certificate in our hands, we have to be what's called ISO. It's an international accreditation body. They're going to come into all of our laboratories here in the division and bring us up through their methods, through their standards to make us to where if a emergency uh, response network federal lab needed us to do something for them. Oh. We'll have the certification, the accreditation to be able to do that. We have even more reasons to be proud of agriculture. More, more reasons to be proud of South Carolina. And then pesticide residue. A lot of people are concerned with this. People with young children. People want their food to be safe. Right. You can help guarantee that. We do. We do uh, market uh, basket surveys where we'll go out to supermarkets and we'll get fresh produce. Uh, we'll get. Uh, frozen produce, uh, seasonal produce such as blueberries, and we'll check. And we want to make sure that the pesticides that are uh, okay to use on that uh, type of produce is acceptable within that acceptable range. And then if there's any um, pesticide that is maybe uh, you can't use or, or not official or unapproved pesticides. For instance, a pesticide you use on corn, you might not be able to use that on uh, strawberries or tomatoes. So we make sure that the pesticides used are within the tolerated level and then there's no unapproved pesticides on, on the produce that we eat. And this is a great service to some of our organic growers because they can come in and be certain that nothing has drifted onto their fields. That's correct. We have some organic farmers that bring their uh, samples in and we'll do an analysis for them to verify that there is no uh, uh, pesticide levels that would cause them not to be able to claim their product to be organic. When it comes to fueling our cars, um, we know that y'all are responsible for seeing that we get a gallon, if we pay for a gallon, but besides that, y'all also check the petroleum itself, I believe. That's correct. We do for a quantity, like you just mentioned, we also do for quality. So we'll take samples of the petroleum products, gasoline, diesel, kerosene, whatnot, and we'll bring it back to our laboratory that's located here, and we'll check for ethanol content, we'll check for the octane rating, make sure it's 87, 89, or 93, and we also check for any type of impurities or any type of contamination that might occur, such as water or wrong fuel in the wrong right container or, or vice versa. So we actually have a laboratory here on site that actually checks for that. So when you go and buy premium gas, you're getting premium gas. If you want to purchase something that does not have ethanol in it, we want to make sure that there's actually that the, the labeling of that uh, fuel dispenser is accurate when it states no ethanol. And the distributors themselves use you a lot because they want to be certain that what they are giving to people who come to and do business with them is exactly as it should be. That's right. We have a real good relationship with our uh, petroleum industry and they'll bring samples in here periodically as submitted samples. They're not official because we have to collect them ourselves Certainly. for official, but we'll check it for them to make sure that there's no impurities that they got the right blend and we'll do things like that to ensure that again that when you purchase the fuel it's going to be uh, the best quality uh, that, that you that you pay for. So although y'all do serve as a watchdog agency you do have a very close and congenial relationship because you are there as partners too to make certain that everybody's working towards the same goal of consumer protection. That's, that's right because if, if you're a filling station or a gas station and if you're selling bad gas or you're not doing something that's accurate it's going to come back to hurt you as a business owner too. So it's kind of one of those um, things that we're protecting the consumer, but we're also protecting the uh, the business and the industry too, because you know that that's what we're all about. We're trying to promote South Carolina agriculture and South Carolina business, and we do it through all the the legal means that we have, but we do it with common sense. And getting back to agriculture, we are sitting in the seed 
laboratory. That's correct. And there's a lot that goes on here. Tell us what y'all are doing here to make certain that wow. when we get seeds, they're going to grow in the garden and they're going to grow the right thing and not a weed. That's correct. We, we have a, a seed lab here. We have uh, four staff members here in the lab. And we bring in samples from uh, official samples that we check for Clemson University. Uh, we go out and collect seeds at the different uh, uh, stores and um, farm and garden Little places, garden right, or big box stores. Yeah. We'll go collect seeds. And we also have uh, farmers who will submit samples of seeds before they plant their their acreage. They want to make sure that they're going to have the germination that's going to be profitable for So them. before they run their tractor for five days with all of those fuel right. costs and labor costs, they want to be certain that the exact correct seed is going in the ground. Right. If they put, uh, they put uh, corn seed, they planted corn and only 50% grew, they wasted 50% of their uh, the profit or the potential for growth. So what are the things that happen when you receive seeds? What are the steps that well, you go through? The first step is we receive the seeds and we check for purity. Uh, our purity lab is where we actually go through to check if there's any seeds that are, are, are not supposed to be there. So if you get corn seeds, you don't want to have any uh, soybean, you don't want to have any tomato, you don't want to have any other seeds that would not be part of that uh, package. We also check for uh, any type of other impurities such as rocks or stones or inert material. We also check for uh, noxious weeds because if you get, say, an evasive weed in your product and you plant it with all, alongside the others, you fertilize it, you water it, you take care of it, it's liable to take over your entire crops. We make sure that the, there's no not, noxious weeds that are located in the seed packages so that would, that would take over your garden or your large thousand acre farm. And I was fascinated to see y'all have a complete and extensive library, a collection of seeds. We do. And you have people who are trained to actually look and tell the difference between different types of seeds and they can identify noxious weeds, they can identify different types of soybeans, different right. types of millet, an incredible knowledge base here. It, it is a, an incredible knowledge base that I, I have not been able to tap into now because not only do you hold them in your hand, you have to look under a micro, you know, a microscope or a magnifying glass for a lot because you have some seeds that are so small it looks like a, a dust speck on your finger. So once we know that we have the seed we want, mm -hmm. then we want to see if it will germinate? Right, so we look at the purity, next thing we're going to do, we're going to germinate it. So what do you do before you germinate something? You plant it. Well, we don't plant it in the ground like a farmer or a, a, a hobbyist or a, a home gardener, but we plant them on different types of sheets or different types of paper that simulate uh, growth in the ground. So we plant them on, uh, on our papers, we put them in our little petri dishes, and then we send them over to our germinator room. Where you again have to have a great deal of knowledge because some of them have to have cold treatment, some of them have to have warm treatment, some mm -hmm. of them have to have different aspects of treatment in order to break dormancy and cause the seed to germinate. Some of them have to have light, some of them have to have darkness. What a lot of knowledge you have. It is, and, and certain things with the germinators you have to set, like you said, the right humidity, the right moisture, the right amount of uh, light versus non-light, the, 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 uh, the different temperatures. And all those are based on the standards that we use for certain seeds. So based on the climate, based on when you plant things, we can adjust our germinators to pretty much simulate the growing conditions in our state to allow us to have a very accurate and, and very very um, uh, straightforward answer. I will certainly shop with more confidence than I ever have before. I want to thank you for all the things that you do to make certain that the consumers of South Carolina are protected. Well, just like with Commissioner Weather states, you know, you want to regulate with common sense. So we know that agriculture is the number one industry in our state that we want to promote, but we also want to know, make sure that the regulatory component is a vital part of that too, to keep our consumers safe in our state. If people would like to explore a little more in depth, where's a good place to do that? Uh, our website, agriculture.sc.gov. Uh, you can go under consumer protection is the icon. Click on that and it brings up all the different departments under consumer protection. And if you click on each one of those departments, it'll give you um, a very uh, good explanation of what we do and a bunch of different resources that are available. Thank you again. All right, thank you.